بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف وجعلنا من أعوانه وأنصاره Uh, this session is dedicated to Arba'in of Abu Abdullah al-Husayn al-Islam. Although the actual day of Arba'in has passed, but this is the first session that we have after Arba'in. And I thought maybe we can have some reflections on Ziyarat Arba'in. I don't remember if for KLC we had reflections on Ziyarat Arba'in. Uh, maybe we had, but I don't remember. But even if we had, um, I have some new points uh, that I would like to share. But it would be nice if you can remind me if we had a session on Ziyar Arba'in before. There is a Ziyara that Sheikh uh, Tusi <coughs> Rahmatullah who is Sheikh Ta'ifa. And I think we can understand uh, Sheikh Ta'ifa in two ways. One is Sheikh Ta'ifa in his own time, in a time close to the time of Huzur um, of Ma'asumin, because he was in more than 1,000 years ago, so very early to the time of Imams in a time that there were you know many figures he was Sheikh Taif he was the master of Shia community but the way I understand it is that it was not only his own generation he was for centuries Sheikh Taif and maybe in my understanding, he remains forever one of the key figures of this Taifa. His Sheikh Taifa forever. He was a great, great scholar. And after him, for some time, other ulama, other fuqaha, found it very difficult to disagree with him in his fatwas. A person that has compiled two of our Qutub Arba'i, a person who has compiled a comprehensive tafsir at Tabian, he has book Uddatul Usul, and many other books on fiqh, etc. Plus, he has a book on dua, Misbahul Mutahajjid, a great scholar, Rahmatullah alayhi. So, in both Tahdeeb al-Ahkam and Misbah al uh, he quotes this from uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, that Imam Sadiq told Safwan al-Jamal that on the day of Arba'in, when the day has already started considerably so maybe it's a few hours after sunrise for example or good time after sunrise maybe for example even two hours for example so that day is uh, not just you know a still dark you know a sty uh, uh, sky is not dark it's day to recite this ziyara ziyara te arbay which you are familiar with, uh, starting with Assalamu ala waliyallahi wa habibih, Assalamu ala khalilillahi wa najibih. Uh, 
why we have a special ziyara for the day of Arba'in or ad, sometimes other occasions we have ziyarat makhsuse maybe because it's telling us that these days are a special days in our calendar although you can always do uh, ziyara but one way to show people that day of arba'in is a special or laylatul qadr is a special or uh, middle of sha'ban is a special is to say that we have a special a'mal not only to do ziyara of Abu Abdullah for example do this ziyara of Abu Abdullah this makes it clear that these days are special every day is significant but some days are more special in the same way that some places are more sacred some times are also more sacred so this is one reason another reason is that if we always have the same recitation the same uh, text to recite when we do ziyara of Abu Abdullah for example or ziyara of all Imams it's okay like we have ziyara to Aminullah which is ziyara to Muttaqa and it's great ziyara it's great but there is a worry that maybe then we lose our attention and it becomes repetitive and then we do it you know automatically and we remember it by heart and then read it without paying attention to the words that we say to have different ziyarat for different imams and different occasions avoid or at least help with avoiding to become repetitive this is also another reason the third reason is that normally in these ziyarats for occasions ziyarat makhsuse there are some references to that occasion for example if it is for Laylatul Qadr there is reference to Laylatul Qadr and there are du'as that are related to that occasion and we can reflect on these a specific although there are also common things but there are some a specific things we can reflect on them to understand the significance of that occasion and what we should you know think in that occasion how we should prepare ourselves for example if uh, Ashura is different from Arba'in and the way we commemorate Ashura is different from the way we commemorate Arba'in these are reflected also in the Ziyarat if the message of Arba'in is more universal and it's a preparation for international procession for example for Arba'in then what is in the content of Ziyara also should be general or if it is Laylatul Qad should be suitable for the night of uh, finalization of the decrease of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so there is a relevance to the occasion another thing is that when we have a special ziyara of Abu Abdullah in a kind of event or occasion we realize that Abu Abdullah 
has something to do with that occasion. For example, for Ashura and Arbain, of course, it's obvious that Abu Abdullah is uh, central. But in middle of Sha'ban, maybe we were not able to think that Imam Hussein has something to do with Nimei Sha'ban, middle of Sha'ban. The fact that we are recommended to have his ziyara first and second, there is ziyarat a maqsus of Abu Abdullah in middle of Sha'ban shows that you have to find the link between middle of Sha'ban and Imam Hussein alayhi To find the link with Imam Zaman, it's easy. But to find the link with Imam Hussein is something that we can be inspired by this fact that we have a special ziyara for him uh, recommended. And if you also read the beginning of uh, this uh, hadith about this ziyara for Laylatul Qadr and middle of Sha'ban, there is something similar. The, the wording is different, but that uh, is like 124,000 prophets would shake hand with you, something like this, if you do ziyarah of Abu Abdullah in Laylatul Qadr or in middle of Sha'ban, with some slight differences in wording. So you realize that Imam Hussein has a role here. And finally, the last thing that comes to my mind, maybe there are other things as well, but right now uh, I cannot think of something more, inshallah we can learn more, is that it's a way, th this one is a little bit uh, difficult, uh, Abu Hussein alhamdulillah referred to this issue of uh, discussion in the Quran. The Quran is living. It's, it's the way Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam and other pro, uh, also awliyaullah including Anbiya and Mursaleen they are with us in our journey. Please listen to this carefully. You may disagree with me and uh, bring uh, counter evidence. That's uh, not a problem. We want to understand. So I am here as a student. One way to look at the awliyaullah, prophets and messengers and our imams is to say that their role is finished. As hujjah of Allah, their role is finished. Hujjah of Allah today is Imam Zaman only and he is in charge. Other hujjah of Allah, they are alive. Certainly they are alive because if Allah says martyrs are ahya'un inda rabbihim yurzaqun, then you can imagine what would be the situation of Rasulullah, Amirul Mu'mineen. Imam Hassan, Lady Fatima, for sure they are Ahya'un and the Rabbim Yurzaqun and more. But people may think their role is finished. And even if we do Tabassul to them, they do it through Imam Al Zaman if they want to help, which is uh, okay, te uh, technically it's okay. But this may give the impression that their role is finished. The maximum is that they pass on our message with their uh, suggestion and recommendation to Imam Zaman. But there is another way of looking at this. This is not my final opinion. I am still thinking, I am inshallah trying to learn I'm sharing with you, maybe you can correct me, maybe you can help me with more evidence, uh, we will see. My understanding is that, that these awliyaullah are not leaving us alone in this world. When 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that in your salat and outside salat if when you recite surah hamd you say ihdina sirat al mustaqim for being on the right path we need to find people who are already on the right path therefore we say sirat al ladina an'amta alayhim this is their sirat Allah has blessed them, bestowed his blessings upon them. And elsewhere, as you know, Allah says, these are four groups of people. Allah says, مَنْ يُتَعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولُ فَأُولَٰئِكَ مَعَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالشُّحَدَاءَ وَالصَّدِّقِينَ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا whoever obeys Allah and the Messenger would be with these people who are an'amta alayhim in Surah Hamd. Here we say an'am Allahu alayhim. It's the same as an'amta alayhim. So if we obey Allah and Messenger, we would be with whom? With those that Allah has blessed upon them, which are prophets, shuhada, either martyrs or witnesses, more likely that it means witnesses, Siddiqin, the most truthful ones, and Salih, the righteous ones. We would be with them. Wahasuna ulaika rafiq. And they are good rafiq. Someone that is moderate with you in journey. Like when you travel, if you go for ziyara, for hajj, or other trips, if you have people who are considerate they understand you and they are patient with you, they help you, they have experience, they have been to this journey before, so they know all the issues, they help you, this is very good. So now my question is, can't we understand from this that if we are traveling and journeying on the right path we are not alone and we have these people also with us is it a fair and reasonable understanding to say that it's not that they have reached there and are waiting for us only to reach them and the only one that, for example, at maximum would be with us is Imam Mahdi Sharif, who is, of course, Hujjat of Allah and has great role, no doubt about it. But is it just Imam Mahdi Sharif? Or those that are an'amta alayhim, those that an'ama Allahu alayhim min al-nabiyin wa shuhada wa siddiqin wa salin wa hasuna ulaika rafiqa, they are also somehow with us. They don't talk to us. They don't communicate to us directly as other human beings. But they can help us. They are good rafiq. If they are not going to do anything for us, then what does it mean? Hasuna ulaika rafiqa. I'm not saying it's not possible to interpret it in another way but I'm saying this can be a fair understanding when we do tawassul to Rasulullah when we do tawassul to uh, Amir al muminin Lady Fatima Imam Hassan Imam Hussein does it mean doesn't uh, this mean that they are somehow with us they are in Allah but also they are with us. When we go to Ziyarah of Imam Raza, we say, Ashhadu annaka tashhadu maqami wa tasma'u kalami wa taruddu salami. So isn't it that Imam Raza is with us? So if they are with us, then they are with us in our time and in our context. 
we do ziyar of Abu Abdullah alayhi salam not like for example we hold a uh, conference or uh, organize an event for example uh, to celebrate or commemorate anniversary of something for example suppose 40 years ago for example uh, one city of Iran was for example liberated from Saddam Hussein now we are celebrating for example this an anniversary or for example you know I don't know when uh, the wall between Eastern and Western Berlin was you know ruined you know it can be celebrated commemorated uh, or for example I don't know this uh, author this writer this president this king you know died you know so normally in these commemorations the event is uh, stuck in the history although it has consequences for future but that event that person that figure is there we go to history to remember them we may get lessons but the event is historical but when we go to ziyara we are not doing ziyara of imam hussein alayhi salam in the year 61 after hijrah we are doing ziyarah of Imam Hussein alayhi salam who has been with us all these centuries and recently for example he has been with us during the time of Saddam he has been with us after collapse of Saddam he has been with us now that millions of people go to Arba'in he has been witnessing he has been with us Hasuna ula'ika rafiqa therefore in if you want to be more accurate Arba'in is not anniversary although every year at a certain time 20th of Safar we commemorate it but it's not anniversary in the sense that it happened only once and we just remember that every year Arba'in is repeating therefore if it is repeating it's not if, if someone every year is born then you cannot say this is birthday anniversary if he's every year born so it means this new birth every year so this is not anniversary if you want to be more precise so one reason to have ziyarat maqsus of arba'in for example of abu abdullah it can be to tell us that in your Arba'in this year he is with you in a particular way not that he is with you throughout the year which m makes it think that you know it's distant no today tonight he is with you so these are reasons that come to my mind for having ziyarat maksus the next point that I want to mention unfortunately uh, we don't have time to go to the ziyarat maybe another time but one point also from ziyarat that I want to mention is when we say akram tahu first we send some salams to Abu Abdullah alayhi salam then we talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma inni ashhadu annahu waliyuk then again after a few lines again we say assalamu alayka ya ibn rasulullah so this is very nice that because hujjah of Allah is very close to Allah we first send salam to him then we talk to Allah then again we send salam to Imam Hussein and talk to him then we again talk to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahumma inni ushiduka so it's very interesting that how we can easily turn 
without being diverted between Hujjah of Allah and Allah himself. So when we reach this part, the second part, اللهم إني أشهد أنه وليك وابن وليك وصفيك وابن صفيك الفائز بكرامتك Oh Allah, I bear witness that he is your wali and the son of your wali. He is safi, he is chosen by you and the son of the one who was chosen by you. The one who has won, who has received your karama. What karama? Allah has honored all human beings, like at karamna bani adam, but this must be more than that. Allah has uh, a special karama for muttaqeen and those who have more taqwa, Allah has more karama for them. Inna akramakum Allah. At Qaq. But this karama seems to be even more than this. It's a special karama. Maybe what comes after that explains it. Because right after Alpha is of karamatic, we say Akram Tahu Bishahad. Either that karama refers to his martyrdom. Or at least his martyrdom is one of the ways that Allah has honored Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. So his martyrdom is a special. It's a karam of Allah for Abu Abdullah alayhi salam. And then we reach this point. وَبَذَلَ مُحُجَّتَهُ فِيك لِيَسْتَنْغِذَ عِبَادَكَ مِنَ الْجَهَالَةِ وَحَيْرَةِ الظَّلَالَةِ This part, in my humble opinion, is different from what we have in other ziyarat. And even here, later, that, for example, we say that أَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ وَفَيْتَ بِأَحْدِ اللَّهِ وَجَاهَتَّ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ حَتَّى أَتَاكَ الْيَقِينِ Which refers to the life of Imam Hussain. Or أَشْهَدُ أَنَّكَ قَدْ أَقَمْتَ الصَّلَاةَ وَآتَيْتَ الزَّكَاةَ وَأَمَرْتَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَنَهَيْتَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ حَتَّى أَتَاكَ الْيَقِينِ These expressions, which are very important, refer to the life of Ma'asum, what they did during their life. And for sure, their life was for guiding people. But بَذَلَ مُحُجَّتَهُ فِيكَ لِيَسْتَنْغِذَ عِبَادَكَ مِنَ الْجَهَالَةِ وَحَيْرَةِ الظَّلَالَةِ In my humble opinion, this is a different thing. And in my humble opinion, we cannot say this to all Imams. Even if we know that all our Imams were martyred. مَا مِنَّا إِلَّا مَسْمُومٌ أَوْ مَقْتُولٌ Or مَقْتُولٌ أَوْ مَسْمُومٌ All of us were either killed by sword or by poison. From Amir al-Mu'min to Imam Askari, they are all shaheed. But if I am right, we don't say to them in this way. That بَذَلَ مُحْجَتَهُ فِيكَ لِيَسْتَنْغِذَ عِبَادَكَ مِنَ الْجَهَالَةِ وَحَيْرَةَ الْذَلَةِ Although we can say that they did their best during their life to save people from jahala and zalala. If you remember in international relations in Islam, we had this from Nahj al-Balagha that Rasulullah did the same. Uh, I actually found it uh, to read for you. That Amir al Mu'minin in Nahj al Balagha uh, in Sermon 1 he says, Fahadahum bihi min al Dalala wa an Qadahum bi makanihi min al Jahala. Thum makhtara subhanahu le Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So we can say they did this. Every Prophet tried to save people from Jahala and Zalala, confusion of Zalala. But can we say, 
بذل محجته فيك ليستنغذ عبادك من الجحال فحيرة الزلال It seems that this is exclusive to Imam Hussein عليه السلام among our معصومين What does it mean? It means that Imam Hussein alayhi salam, like any other Hujja of Allah, during his life, he tried to guide people. Of course, guidance is upon Allah, and people should want. Yeah, so it's not that they can guide, but they try to guide. So like any other Hujja of Allah, he tried to guide people during his life. Through his words, his mo'iza, his teachings, his example, his akhlaq, his prayer, different forms. Okay, this is common. But Abu Abdullah alayhi salam was given a special role by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide people with his blood. Amir al-Mu'manin was also killed and for sure his martyrdom has great impact and helps us also in our spirituality and we get lots of lessons Imam Hussein alayhi salam the same Imam Sajjad, Imam Baghel there is no doubt about this but what I am saying is that no blood has served the purpose of guidance like the blood of Abu Abdullah and this was deliberately offered by Imam Hussein it was not that for example someone attacked him or gave him poison yes they were all ready for martyrdom but it was not that they made a deliberate and in the case of Imam Hussein, collective uh, movement for martyrdom. Because what Imam Hussein alayhi salam could do during his life, which was great, is in my humble opinion much less than what Imam Hussein could do through his martyrdom. Normally they served with their lives and partially with the martyrdom. But Imam Hussein more with his martyrdom and somehow with his life also definitely. I'm not undermining what he did during his life. I'm just trying to say that his martyrdom is different. So here we say not that he spent his days and nights and years in Amr al-Ma'roof, Nahi as Munkar, Iqamatu Salat, Inta Zaka only. No, it's not just that. That is true. But also, He gave the blood of his heart. Some people have said something beautiful. Uh, because you know blood goes all over the body but uh, the blood in the heart are the last remaining drops of blood and if there is no blood in the heart then the whole body will collapse so this is why we say blood of the heart Imam Hussein himself in uh, uh, Mecca and I think actually was in Mena, before departing Mecca towards Iraq, he gave a sermon. And in that sermon, he said that, uh, He said, as if I see that joints of my body are scattered by the wild animals. And so he was informing that he's going to be killed. And he said, 
من کان بازلن فینا محجته و موتنن علا لقاء الله نفسه فلیرحل معنا فانی راحل مصبحا انشاء الله I am going to travel tomorrow there should be no ambiguity if you want to come for victory for you know, power for money for booties no don't come with me but whoever wants to give muhjatahu the blood of his heart not blood of finger or you know hand or leg which can be cured blood of his heart and has prepared himself for Allah should come with us so Imam Hussein's blood did something for guidance that his life contributed to that prepared for that but didn't give that much that his blood gave I, I hope it's clear because there's a chance of misunderstanding here I am not undermining his significance of his life but I'm saying that his life crowned him with this karam of Allah which is martyrdom and what Islam Muslims and humanity is benefiting from uh, the martyrdom of Imam Hussein alayhi salam could not be achieved if he was not killed in this way even if he was killed for example by poison for example somewhere or you know if he was in Mecca and secretly you know they had killed him this would not have happened so his blood is a special blood and this is I think related to being Tharullah you can imagine that what this blood is going to do for guidance of humanity that it is considered as Tharullah and his Shahada is Sayyid al-Shahadat and therefore he is Sayyid al-Shuhada although he is not the best person even he's not the best martyr Amir al muminin is better than him it seems that Rasulullah was also a martyr so he's better than Lady Fatima for example but still he is Sayyid al-Shuhada because his Shahada is Sayyid of all Shahada so this is what uh, I wanted to share with you inshallah think about it maybe you can do even mubahasa collect sayings of ulama so that inshallah we can develop this discussion if what I said is uh, correct then it gives us a different attitude towards uh, the role of Imam Hussein alayhi salam every year with us and in akhir zaman and the connection between him and the mission of uh, Imam Zaman. I think nothing like blood of Imam Hussein can help Imam Zaman, and this is one reason why their motto is Ya Latharat al Hussein, in the way that we have explained in uh, some lectures, connection between Imam Hussein and Mahdi. What does it mean? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala